the secrets. First, concealed in his right hand is a retractable cord that goes inside his jacket to a spring-loaded key ring on his belt. Attached to the end is a suction cup that easily sticks to the smooth light bulb. When it appears that he is preparing to crush the bulb between his hands, he's actually just sticking the suction cup to the sides. See? Now when he pretends to pulverize the bulb into nothing, he's really just hiding it in his hand so we don't see it being pulled away by the retractable line. He then makes some mystical waves of his hand and it appears the bulb has vanished. But now you know where it went. Next, the magician will demonstrate a card trick with a dangerous twist. We want you to know up front this is not something you want to attempt at home. His assistant will act as a volunteer. The magician begins with an ordinary deck of playing cards. He fans them, then shows them to his beautiful volunteer. Next, he invites her to pick a card at random and write a name across the face. I would have asked her to write her phone number. Penmanship. The magician takes the card and does some scribbling of his own, drawing a line beneath the name. He shows it to the girl. And now he begins to shuffle the cards to bury her cards somewhere inside the deck. He offers the cards to her as he removes a very imposing samurai sword from its scabbard. This sword is very real, very sharp, and is what makes this trick so dangerous. He takes the cards from the girl and positions them in his left hand. With his right, he picks up the sword. He carefully slides the sword into his hand, balancing the deck on the blade. Watch as he counts to three and flips the cards into the air stabbing into them. One card is impaled on the sword, wouldn't you know. There's the girl's chosen three of spades, complete with her handwriting. It's a good trick to impress the girls, but I still would have asked for a number. How did the magician find the chosen card with the razor-sharp blade of his samurai sword? Here are the secrets. He begins by showing his volunteer an ordinary deck of cards. She makes a genuinely random selection and writes a name across the face as instructed. They place it back on the deck. The magician takes his pen and underlines the name. The first secret is that the pen contains a concealed razor blade. Cool. When he underlines the name, he's really slicing a slit in the card. There it is. Next, when he shuffles the cards, he's really using a phony shuffle that allows the chosen card to remain undisturbed on the bottom of the deck. See? There's her card. In slow motion, we can see how he's only shuffling the top cards, leaving the bottom card untouched. Next, he balances the deck on the blade of the sword. What he's really doing is sliding the sword through the slit he cut with the razor pen. He throws the cards in the air, and amazingly, the chosen card appears to have been impaled. Even in slow motion, we can see that the flurry of cards creates enough of a diversion to hide the one card that's already been speared by the sword. If we switch to another angle and freeze the picture, we can see that the card is pierced by the sword the entire time. Stabbing a card by magic is easy. Once, you know... Next, the magician attempts a perilous escape. Will he make it out alive before he's sliced to ribbons?
by the rotating blades of death. For his last illusion tonight, the magician will take on one of the most death-defying escapes ever attempted. Remember, never try to duplicate any of the magician's tricks at home. This is a very perilous stunt that our world-class professional has been practicing for months. As we can see, giant steel blades provide the danger in this illusion. This triangular-shaped box will provide the magician's prison. The razor-sharp blades are held at the ends of the steel rails by a rope. Inside the box is a beautiful assistant, but she'd be crazy to stay inside because that box is directly in the path of those terrifying blades. The magician releases a safety cable on one of the blades. Now things are getting dangerous. Next, he crosses over to release the cable on the other blade. Now a single rope is holding the blades in place. Again, do not attempt anything like this at home. The magician climbs into the box and the door is closed. His assistants secure his hands on the outside of the box. His wrists are locked with heavy chains and bulletproof locks. With his hands shackled on either side of the box, the magician has no way to reach the chains or pick the locks. His goal will be to escape before the blades travel down the rails and into the box, slicing him to ribbons. The blades begin to rotate. He struggles with the chains. Better hurry, those blades won't wait. Next, the other assistant returns with a torch. She uses the torch to set fire to the rope. When it burns through, the blades will be sent crashing into the box and the magician. His hands are free, but he's not out. There they go. They slammed into the box and he didn't get out in time. They're still spinning. All hope of escape is now lost. The executioner is back to open the box. This won't be pretty. He's gone. Where did he go? Right here, of course. The magician is turned into the executioner, safe and sound, with his beautiful girls by his side. How did he do it? Here are the secrets. At the start of the illusion, the magician reveals an assistant inside the triangular box. This is to show that there isn't much room inside the box. But there is room and she wasn't alone. Hidden behind this false panel is the magician's body double. He's in place before the magician ever steps inside. When we see the magician climb into the cabinet, he's really just slipping out through the back. From behind, we can see him sneak out, leaving his double inside.
The double then slides back to replace the magician, and it's his hand we see being shackled and chained. Next, the double flips a switch to activate the blades. Then his other hand is locked in place, and the audience thinks the magician is secured in the cabinet and struggling to escape. Meanwhile, the magician is being wheeled off stage inside the staircase the assistants use to reach the top of the box. With the spinning blades and flaming torches, the audience doesn't even notice that the girls are taking the staircase off stage. Next, the executioner enters to light the rope and add some danger. Off stage, the magician is slipping into an identical executioner's robe. Now, while the rope is burning, we see the double slip out of the manacles. But how? He simply slides his hands out of the chains and into the box because the chains have been rigged. The metal frame that holds the chains contains a spring-loaded pulley which allows him to slide the chains out, releasing enough slack to slip his hands through. The audience thinks they see the flames burn through the rope, sending the blades into the box. But inside, it's really the double pulling a ripcord and releasing the blades. The burning rope is just for dramatic effect. But how does the double escape being sliced to shreds by the blades? With the front of the box open, we can see that the blades are carefully positioned to enter the front half of the box. Plenty of room. Next, the magician takes the torch from his assistant and returns to the stage. We don't even stop to think it's really him. He opens the box to reveal the blades and we can't see the double behind the false panel. He removes the cloak and reveals himself as the executioner. He may have fooled you once, but he won't fool you with this one again, now that you know the secrets. Next time, the masked magician returns to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets. Ali Bricks. That's what I do. Doesn't make no difference to me if it's Dusseldorf or Darling. If you embarrass us, we'll come down on you like a ton of bricks. A very appropriate metaphor, Mr. Terrible. Our feed is aimed packed Tuesday and Wednesday at 9 o'clock on ITV4.